Hello, I'm Sandra Dirks and I send you a warm welcome to our first live talk, to our first ambassador talk. And my guest today for the first live stream is Brandy Agerbeck. Hello. <laughs> I'm Brandy Agerbeck of loosetooth.com and I help you reclaim drawing as your best thinking tool. And this is based on a 20 plus year career as a graphic facilitator, making giant live drawings of people's conversations and presentations. Wonderful. And what do you want to share with us today? Uh, Ken Wilber, if you've heard of integral theory, uh, Ken Wilber is the leader of integral theory. And uh, she brought me this model. Um, Sandra's going to help me with the slides. Are we all set there with the slides yet? Awesome. So what you'll see on the screen right now, the first slide is what Ken Wilber's model is, the four quadrant model. He was trying to see how all sorts of different types of thought work together. And he created this two by two matrix. Um, I'm a big fan of two by two matrices. So um, on the left side of the model, you see the, um, on the left side of the model, you see what's internal. On the right side, you see, you see what's external. The top half of the model is the internal, or sorry, the individual experience. And the bottom half of the model is the shared experience, the collective experience. So with this model, you see these four corners. Um, and so I'm gonna just leave, touch this lightly right now. We'll now go into how I adapted his model and added this layer on top about drawing specifically. So we can all find really wonderful reasons to draw. So Sandra, if you don't mind the next slide. Um, so first, the upper right-hand corner of the draw quad is this individual um, objective external type of drawing. And this is drawing to see. This is drawing, you know, if I were to draw Sandra's portrait, that it looks like Sandra. Um, if I was drawing a still life, you'd know what objects made up that still life. And this is sort of drawing the thing that you see outside of yourself, drawing to see. And this is, I think, a very beautiful skill to learn, and I'm thankful you know, I have learned it from my past experience in fine arts. But um, the trouble is that it's only one fourth of the drawing that it and unfortunately, it's the it's the corner of the drawing that freaks people out that makes them feel like drawing is inaccessible to them. So um, if I think uh, if we got the next slide with a little circle that says drawing is so much more. It's not just simply that upper left hand corner or upper right hand corner. Um, so next, uh, the next slide is drawing to think. This is the upper left corner where uh, it's, it's drawing to think through your own ideas. This is the individual internal experience. So it's just very, very subjective. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? And getting those ideas out of your head and onto paper. Um, and you know, this, this is, this is definitely my personal happy place in a way I've used drawing my whole lifetime. Now the next corner, uh, you'll see the red corner in the lower right, lower left-hand corner is drawing to show. This is drawing to communicate a specific idea to a specific audience. So these are things like information graphics or advertising, um, anytime a PowerPoint presentation, much like we're sharing here today. This is anytime you're creating specific images to convey a specific message to a specific group, that specific collective. And then finally, the fourth corner, the green corner, is drawing to do, drawing to make great things happen. This is where graphic facilitation lives. So this is the external collective corner of the model. And this means drawing as a resource, using drawing to make things, make, helping the group do good work. So sometimes that works as being the single person in the room drawing for the group of people like we do as a graphic facilitator or graphic reporter. It can also mean using things like sticky notes for brainstorming sessions. It can mean um, uh, sketching out different prototypes. It can mean a bunch of different things, but the whole umbrella to that green corner is drawing to do. Again, drawing to make stuff happen. So this was really looking at, again, taking that first layer of the Ken Wilber model and adding this layer of drawing on top of it to help you think more broadly about different types of drawing. Because again, I think what happens so often is people only think of drawing as uh, representational drawing, drawing, you know, again, I'm drawing Sandra's portrait and it looks like Sandra. And it's a kind of drawing where we uh, add a lot of judgment 
There's a lot of the drawing is good or the drawing's bad or the drawing's pretty or the drawing's ugly. And that really limits our ability to use drawing to do a whole heck of a lot of great work. So um, now another layer I like to add, a third layer I love to add to this model is um, the next slide. If you imagine that the, now just think about this, this model kind of grayed out, we're gonna add two lines on top of the model. The first one is the uh, model that, that, that goes through the blue and the red quadrants. And this is uh, these two quadrants, um, the drawing to see and the drawing to show, these two corners of the model are more product focused. For these drawings to be effective, to, uh, they do need to be more accurate and refined. So, you know, think about something like drawing to show. If you're creating a PowerPoint presentation for a specific audience, like, um, you know, knowing your client, you need to know what the client's brand colors are. You know, is there, do you need to know the colors of the competitor? You know, you need to think about how are, how are you creating images that work for that specific audience? Um, uh, and the seed, like I said, if I'm drawing Sandra's portrait, it looks like Sandra. Now, if you go to the next slide, that is my happy place. And I think this is why a lot of us are here today and why we so love Neuland and the awesome tools that they, they produce for us. And that's that the other, the other diagonal on this model is um, going through the drawing to think and the drawing to do corners. These are drawings that are focused on process. So it isn't about pretty or ugly or good or bad. The only judgment of the process focused drawings are, do they get us a step farther in what we're trying to do? That really is the key there. So, and, uh, and unlike the product focused drawings that need to be more refined and accurate, the process focused drawings are actually better when they're fast and messy because it is just sort of getting these ideas down, getting them out of your head onto paper, getting all those voices in the room on a big sheet of paper up on the wall. So all of those types of drawings um, really are about fast, messy, get stuff down and get moving, get working with it. Um, and uh, the next slide you'll see exactly how I use the, um, uh, how I connect the process focused drawing to my two books. So um, they are color coded. <laughs> the yellow book, uh, the first book, my the green book, the graphic facilitator's guide is entirely focused on drawing to do that green quadrant, that green port, the green corner of the quadrant. And then the latest book, The Idea Shapers, is all about individual meaning making, visual thinking for yourself. Now, there's certainly a really nice um, connection between the two, but that's that's where they came from. And uh, a question people often ask are, when is the red book coming and when is the blue book coming? They aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of other people are doing really great books and uh, re building resources around those more product focused drawings. <clears throat> you know, again, what I'm here to do is help build resources to help you use drawing as your best thinking tool. So I think that is the draw quad. Oh, oh, one quick last thing. So if we go to the next slide, you will see this is one of the things I absolutely love and this just reinforces um, process and product. The drawing here in English uh, is both a noun and a verb. And the issue is that um, when you think about drawing as a noun, that's when you get into that product focus. That's when we tend to limit what we think drawing can do. But drawing is also a verb, and that's drawing as a wonderful tool, as a wonderful process that lets us make great things happen. So really, in all the work I'm doing, when I'm teaching an online class, if I'm leading a lab in person, if I'm speaking today here on this, on this, um, in this interview, it is all about focusing on drawing as a verb, drawing as a process, and again, the only judgment of these drawings is what does it help you do? And that's a very quick snapshot of the draw quad. Yeah. So I, yeah. Great. I hope they, um, the audience can listening or can hear me now. We. <laughs> hope so, so thank you for for that. So we have another yeah. slide. So. Did you say this? Um, mm -hmm. Number fourteen. <laughs> is it? Um, I think I'm. I think I'm good. What the drawing is a noun and a verb. Yes. Okay. So.
So let's come awesome. back into the group into the super. People say they can't hear me, but can you hear me now? I see. Uh, yes, Sandra, loud and clear. And thanks, Brandy. Ah, okay. Yep, sounds like sounds like we're good. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wonderful. So, okay, are there any questions in the chat? I, I'll have a look now. Are there any questions for the drawing court for Brandy in the chat? Yeah. And also, I'd love if people comment, where do you see your work? What corner of the draw quad do you see your work? Is it drawing to see? Is it drawing to show? Um, you could say the, the color or the word. So is it a question in, 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 in the uh... In the Just chat, if, if, yeah, if, if people want to answer in the chat, what corner of the draw quad they see their work, and it could be more than one, for oh, sure. Okay. Not everyone works just in one corner. Yes. So yes, I can, perhaps I, if if people can hear me now, I can I can say perhaps what uh, that uh, the model helped me to understand. Oh yes, that. please. So yeah. so um, so for me it was very important to to uh, to get a new focus. Um, because um, so this this made my drawings more simple, and um, I started with the first book, and um, and then as I've seen you explaining this model, I said yes. <laughs> so now I prefer the the process. So sometimes I'm preparing something, but it, it's it's so great to work with the group and to yeah. um, to see the. Um, the ideas uh, coming up and to do with life. <laughs> yeah. And so people always are afraid of doing this live, uh, yeah. even if they, they, are, they are in a workshop for a different subject. So no facility, no graphic facilitators or graphic recorders. But uh, yeah. people appreciate if they do something live, readable, and uh, so have fun in drawing something. And uh, yeah. even if I'm not able to draw animals, people love it. If I'm drawing yeah. a horse or whatever yeah. is yeah. needed. And so the, the idea to, to see it as a process helped me so much to get more, be more confident. So yeah. let's see what, what's in the chat. Yeah. And I think just to quickly comment while you check the chat that um, I, you know, that, that idea of um, when you stay process focused and keeping it simple, because it is live, it is real time in this particular role of graphic facilitation. And um, I know that, I, you know, I totally understand that as people are doing this work, you feel like you're performing. You know, you, there's like, there feels like a, lot of, like a lot of pressure of, I'm making these drawings in front of people, therefore they have to be perfect. And actually <laughs> the opposite is true. They're simple, they're direct. It's more important that it's fast and that it's keeping up with the content, what people are saying in the room. Um, so I really appreciate what you shared, Sandra, because I, I see a lot of folks who, who realize that they really have to um, kind of, you know, relearn or sh make that shift from being so worried about the product and, and instead, like you said, keying into what is our process, how am I supporting the process, instead of worrying about the product focus. Okay, so let's have a look into the chat. Yeah. So I can't see any questions I, can, nope. I only see the technical thing yeah <laughs> but there's so you, you asked the question brandy so you asked um people to write in the chat in which yep. um quad they are active so i let's put the uh, the the slide again yep on and Sounds so people it's perhaps it's easier to see for people yeah so Great. I put you into the presentation and so you are there and yep. so we can see the the four uh, the four quads and perhaps people have uh, have an idea what you um, yep. think about or what you uh, told us so they can as, ask. as people think about that and answer um, I just quickly, if folks are interested in this model, um, I want to let you know that you can find it on the homepage, my homepage of loosetooth.com. It's in the Brandifesto, which is a PDF, free PDF um, that you'll find on the homepage. Um, you also can find it, um, it's explained at the beginning of the Idea Shapers. 
And certainly if you hop over to my YouTube channel, you'll see several different videos if you just search for draw quad. So just want to, if folks like this model and want to share it or revisit it, that there's several different places they can see it. Okay, thank you, Brandy. Yeah, so, sure. Which corners you so you work in? You you asked in the chat. There's yep. no answer. So that's okay. I think we have to be a bit patient about that because no uh, problem. the audience is 30 seconds around <laughs> behind us. And so, okay. Yep. <clears throat> We need some some more time, perhaps, yep. in the end of the of the next part of our session. So let's come back, and uh, you have a, a second idea to share with yeah. us. Would you like to yeah. share it? Happy to, totally. So uh, the draw quad it really is this big broad model about broadening your definition of drawing. But now let's get our hands on these ideas. Uh, <laughs> when we when we're doing. Um, when we're doing this work and we're staying in process focus, we are always making certain choices about how we're making our drawings. And one of the most powerful tools, but kind of sort of least understood is color. Um, I think that, you know, you can tell I'm in a very colorful room now, right now. Obviously I, I, I enjoy color myself, <laughs> but um, yeah, totally. But a lot of times it's not something that people have a strong understanding of. So, um, one thing, one one specific tool, and again, you'll find this again in the idea shapers, is um, this specific idea shaper, the specific visual thinking tool of the trio. And the idea of the trio is um, actually limiting your color palette. So we know that Neuland has, you know, 30 plus gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. I've got them all. Um, I can't show you right now, but I've got them all kind of in these <laughs> wonderful bins on my wall right over there. Um, but what I like to say is I really encourage folks to use color a lot versus using a lot of colors. And I think what happens is when people have a lot of color, you know, they may use everything sort of in their in their toolbox. But um, you're each time you choose a specific color, you're making meaning. So I want you to actually limit your color palette to make more meaningful drawings. So uh, here we're going to talk about the trio. So if you hop to the next slide, Sandra, where we've got the free ink drops, yes. the idea here is that we're using the contrast of the white piece of paper that we're drawing on to we're, we're creating contrast between the white of the paper and the different colors of inks we're using. So here in the trio, you can see there's three ink drops and the first one is black and black has the most contrast to the piece of paper. Therefore, as you see on this little grid in this drawing, black comes forward. It's got the highest contrast, so it sort of pops forward in the drawing. In the sort of middle, you've got a dark color, and that's sort of, you know, halfway between sort of the front and the back. And then way in the back there, you see the yellow ink drop. That's the lightest color in your trio. So what I'm asking you to do is choose three colors, but think about which is the color, you know, I, I always use black as my as my first color. And then I choose a really light color that's low contrast to the paper because those whatever you draw in that lightest color is going to recede on the page. And then we have a nice dark color in between. So in this case, we've got yellow, green, olive green and black as our three colors. Oh. So, um, yeah, so we're creating different la layers of color on the page. So if you look at the next slide, we have a sample drawing, which is drawn in these three colors. And here you can see that there is um, a lot of uh, the content, the words are drawn, which in this case is just kind of like lines, this little you know diagram in this case, it's, it's shrunken down. But um, the lines are, um, uh, that would be the text, the content. Like here's, here's the guts of the drawing, here are the words. And then you can see in the drawing, we've got a lot of um, dark green for things like titles or little icons. So you can see a whole heck of a lot of the drawing is that lightest color, the yellow, for things like containers around ideas and connectors between ideas. And the nice thing about using this color, this lighter color, is again that it recedes. It's not competing with any of the text. It's working more in, um, in uh, concert with the darker colors. So next, if you go to the next slide, you'll see, let's see what the first, the next slide is, um, I'm just checking my order here. Um, 
Is that the yellow slide? Yeah. So yes. next you'll see mm -hmm. just the yellow color isolated. So here you can see, again, I'm using that for things like connectors, like containers, boxes around things. And then if Sandra goes to the next slide, we're going to see exactly what the dark color is used for. Again, this is the uh, things like titles and little icons, um, little diagrams, things within the drawing. And then in the next slide, you'll see just the black ink. And this would be where we've got a couple drop shadows on the main word topic in the center, but also the text. So lastly, on the final, um, uh, this next slide, you can see what it would look like if everything was drawn in black. And here mm -hmm. you can see what a difference using those three colors yes. makes. And another really good thing about using a trio is that you're, you're going into the drawing knowing what the purpose of each of those three colors are, and that actually frees up a ton of your mental space as you're working, and especially when you're working live, all that energy you need to focus on the listening and the content, you know exactly what each of those three colors is going to do for you. That's great. And yes. so then finally, yeah, finally, just to show those three colors again in contrast, you can see the, um, you can see how they all work together. And again, because that yellow color is the lowest contrast of the piece of paper, those, those items in the drawing receive, they kind of sit back. And then the darker the ink is, the more contrast of the piece of paper, and it pops forward. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've seen it in the book, but, but now if you explain this live, yeah. it's, it's um, yes. Wow. Good. good. Oh, good. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I can, so I can I think see we're the chest. Olivier is it working? writes a um, great idea for the trio. Yes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I think we're done with the slides. Yes. We're good there. Then I can also show some examples. Uh, so what, um, this is another version of the drawing. I just have to get the right angle so we can see it on camera here. Yes. Just a bit you know, so the mid, uh, to, the, to the other, to the left. Yes. And bit, a bit higher, like please. This? Yes. A higher. <laughs> great. I think yep. this is great. Mm. So, so here you can see this is, um, uh, in, in Neuland colors, this is 100 black, 200 red, and 600 orange. Um, and they may look, I have a lot of lighting here in Chicago, so if the <laughs> colors look strange, that's just because of lighting. Like this yeah. is an example with um, 600, the, uh, again, the orange, here it looks a little yellow on my screen, but um, 304, the nice dark blue, denim blue. Um, yeah. And again, this is, you know, again, we can use all the different colors for, for depending on what drawing we're doing. Um, here you can see 600, the orange, 101, the gray, and the black. Ah, you use the gray different, so this is great yeah. to see. So, so the gray is uh, often used. Uh, I use the gray often similar to the yellow, and mm -hmm. uh, it's good to see that the gray has another uh, uh, another idea. Or there's another yeah. use for gray. Uh, yeah, this is a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, you can. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, like uh, there's. Um, let's see here. I've got. Um, like here's an example of, this is the yellow and the gray. It's a nice combination. Mm -hmm. So that's a 500 yellow and the 101 gray. Yes, yes so, and it's, it's yeah. great how this works. Even if this is, um, there's the, um, the yellow and the gray, they are mm -hmm. not these heavy colors. So yeah. it's, it's great that this works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so in this particular case, all of these cards are, um, I'm, I finally am working on my own kits, my own ambassador kits, um, mm -hmm. and trying to find what I, what I did was I took the, the colors I chose for my kits and showed how many different color combinations you can use. I think, I, I think it's like eight or nine colors, mm -hmm. maybe 10 colors, yes. um, but you can get a lot of different um, effects with that set just by choosing different yes. trios. Yes. So here you can see there's a cool colors here with a 301, a 400, and a 100. Yeah. And what um, are you, um, if yeah. you plan these these colors, do you use the colors of the client? Do you often uh, say, okay, it's a logo with a green, so I choose the green with a similar color for that? It all depends. I definitely want to coordinate. Um, if there is um, any kind of theme colors for the event, I keep, I keep that in mind. Definitely, if there's branding colors that are important, 
Um, it, it depends. Like certainly sometimes you're in meetings where they're actually talking about their identity and their branding, but mm -hmm. other times they're not. Like for instance, I might be working with a client with a red logo, but if they're talking about sustainability, I'm going to go green. You know, mm -hmm. so I, it's not just their their identity. It's also the content they're talking about. So I yeah. tend to use greens for things like sustainability, for growth. Um, I like using blues for things that are like that kind of um, blue sky strategic thinking. I tend to use the warmer colors when we're talking about human beings. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more like, you know, the, the heart um, and uh, the warmth of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm definitely keeping those things in mind and um, talking with clients about, you know, are there, is there any specific meaning that you're using, with, you know, any color coding or specific meaning um, that I can definitely make sure I'm coordinating with. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any questions in the chat? I will have a look into the chat. Yeah, please. So, oh, there's Heather. Hello. Thank you for talking about the difference between drawing for product and drawing for process. That has been a hot topic in our field recently. Oh, yes. Yep. And, oh, I need to refresh the chat. Perhaps there yep. are questions. From and I think, you know, to, to Heather's point, you know, I think what happens a lot, um, you know, for instance, we've got this massive group on Facebook called Graphic Facilitation. And it's over, like, I think it's 10 or 11,000 people in it. And um, what happens is a lot of people post kind of their brightest, shiniest, products and mm -hmm. products yes but there's not enough conversation about how the heck those drawings happened yeah. so i think for a lot of viewers like i know a lot of my like i said they're fast messy drawings even my client work um and it wouldn't be like the showstopper mm -hmm. um but it's exactly what that group needs yeah so you know if you're if you're in the group or you're sharing work with colleagues you know ask them what was the process behind this how did you yeah. make these choices yes. because you know if you're just looking at that end product you know, that's only like I tell clients 80 percent of what they're hiring me for, you know, mm -hmm. the fee that they're paying is the process is watching that drawing take shape in front of them. Yes. And I only kind of say 20 percent is the artifact. Mm -hmm. um, the artifact is very, very powerful for the people in the room, but they're they're hiring me as the graphic facilitator, as that support in the room, as that resource. You know, they, they may think they're drawing, they're buying a drawing. Really, what they're doing is they're buying the making of that drawing. That that is that is re the real value in what we're doing as graphic facilitators. So Heather, I appreciate you point, pointing that out, and I think that we definitely have to be more willing to share the messier drawings that got really great work done, and yeah. you know not be you know or or at least talk more about process. Um, I understand why people want to want to share those really fancy drawings, but yes, it's yeah. really a tiny slice of what we're doing. Yes, yes, it is, and so yeah. so yeah, if you. So for me, it was, wow, I can't do this so fast. Right. And so yeah. I don't want to do this. But um, yeah. there's often discussion with colleagues. They say, why don't you uh, do this? And I so I'm afraid I'm, I'm not fast enough for these wonderful pieces. But um, in general, it's the process. And um, so we should <laughs> share more processes, not more and, shows. And a ton of that, a ton, you know, when you say you're not fast enough, most of those drawings aren't live. That's yes. the problem is we're comparing a live drawing to yeah. something that may have taken place over the course of an entire day or yeah. taken, you know, been done in the studio or taken yeah. the, or done over the course of several days. So, you know, we're really not even, you know, comparing apples to apples. So, yeah, thank you, Heather. Yes, thank you, Heather. So now, now let's have a small promotion part, no? <laughs> promotion. <laughs> sure. da, da, da. <laughs> and if you book now, you will get yeah, right. an extra, an extra smile <laughs> extra, from I both can, of I, us. I can easily give extra smiles. I'm happy to do yes. that. Yes. Yeah. So I'm so, so happy to be. Yeah. So happy to be part of the Neuland tour this year, celebrating the 50th birthday. Yeah. Um, so a couple things to share with folks to let you know what's what's what. Um, one is I do have, um, so one thing I do in person, I have online courses I'm building, um, have built and am building, um, but I teach a three-day immersive workshop called The Lab, the Loosetooth.com Lab. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And part of the tour, I'm um, sharing the lab in Denmark right before UVIS, uh, July 25th, 26th, 27th. Um, I'll also be in Hamburg in um, mi about mid-August on that same trip. Um, so... 
Yes. Wow. <laughs> really, yeah, really looking forward to coming back to Hamburg, which I love a lot. Um, and uh, and then I'm really, 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 really excited to be there in uh, be with you all at Neuland in Germany in Eichenzell in October. Yeah. So in October, we're having a wonderful big birthday party for Neuland. So so happy to celebrate. And shortly after the big birthday party on October 8th and 9th, I'm teaching two one day workshops. The first workshop is the Idea Shapers Tour. And that really is, I'm grabbing the book, that really is walking through the uh, visual thinking concepts in the Idea Shapers. And then the second day focuses in on the pyramid, which is one specific Idea Shaper. It's all about hierarchy and structure and scale. And it's something that people often come to the lab and want to learn from me is how do you create more organization in your work? And, um, uh, you know, so then the second day we dive into pyramid power um, yeah. and not no, no tinfoil hats, you know, nothing like that. No? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, if we want, no. maybe we'll make tinfoil <laughs> hats, but that's a, di- <laughs> a different kind of pyramid. Yep. Yep. Um, different kind of pyramid power. And um uh, you can sign up. I think we're actually working on the last logistics sort of contract wise, but soon the registration will be open um, on, um, um, I think, on Neuland's site. And well, I'm sure we'll link to it. Um, I can yes. add a comment below when it's yes, live. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so really happy to both have my labs in Europe this summer um, and also be returning back to Germany uh, in October to celebrate the 50th and uh, teach those two workshops. They're, um, they're each a one day workshop. And I know that if you do both, there's a bit of a discount. So, yeah. So if yeah. you book now, I said. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's, I think, no, about no. six. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no. about 16 <laughs> spots, right? There's only six people in the labs. That's a very, very small group. Yes. Um, what's great about the lab is it's one conversation. Um, it's a ton of direct feedback. Um, it's wonderful. It's just, you know, I find that people either come to the lab because they're looking for like a really great turbo boost to start their practice yes. mm-hmm. or they've been working for a while and they're coming in with specific things they know they really want to work on. And, you know, for a lot of, for folks who kind of feel like they've hit a plateau and they know they want to bring their work to the next level. Uh, they come and join me in the lab. Um, oh, wow. And then the, then the, there's about six, I think it's about 16 people per workshop in October. So in a little October, bigger okay. group. But, but the um, lab is again, intense if you can't hide. No. <laughs> Six people. You know, yeah, nobody needs you to hide, You always though. get it's feedback great. and, wow, I think I hide myself <laughs> under the chair. No, no. You get no. so many it's... knowledge for your money. So go. I like, <laughs> I like, to, say, yeah. <laughs> I like to say the lab is, is safe. It's challenging for sure, but it's also a safe space. It really yes. is that place where you can experiment. Yes. So, you know, I haven't had anyone hide under the under the table yet <laughs> in six years. Ooh. So <laughs> good, good, very yeah. good. But um, yeah. so so you have um, it's it's necessary to, to say this. This is this is really in, intensive. It's it's intense for sure. <laughs> I, I, yes. I so, like if, if you come and do the lab with me in Denmark right before you the mm-hmm. great thing is you have a wonderful weekend in that beautiful space on the seaside to recover before the workshop, before the conference starts. I yes. definitely recommend to people that if, um, when you do the lab to give yourself some time to let it soak in because, um, and, but the thing is what gets me is on my feedback form at the end of the lab, the number of people who say they wish it was longer, uh, give us more, but because <laughs> it's, it's such a great, you know, it's so direct. It's exactly, you know, exactly. I, um, one thing about the lab is there's no specific agenda it's always responding to those six people who join me. So, you know, it's definitely always completely customized to what those six folks need. I opened the presentation again to show, to show the thank you and to show your mm. channel. So you can connect awesome. with Brandy on YouTube and on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Pinterest, on LinkedIn, whatever. And so if yeah. you haven't, can do and and definitely uh if you go to loosetooth.com go to my homepage. at the very bottom there's a sign up for an email list that's the absolute best way to make sure you know you're hearing you know what resources i've been building and have to offer yes but by all means on that same homepage, you'll see those links to all those social media channels so please connect in whatever ways make most sense for you yes connect <laughs> so yep. 
thank you for being here. And Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you and goodbye.